start without everybody. Okay, uh, noting the time and the presence of a basic quorum, I'll call this meeting at the Board of Selectmen to order. Um, we will start with the first item on our agenda, citizens' concerns. Is there anybody here who would like to speak about any issue not otherwise on our agenda? Okay, uh, Chairman's update. I wanna wish everybody a happy new year and hope everybody had a good New Year's Eve. Uh, I saw a number of people who were here tonight at New Year's Eve, which was quite a fun time. And thank you to Sharon and the COA for putting that on. Uh, as a reminder, this Saturday starting at eight in this room will be budget Saturday. So I assume everybody up here will be here and uh, hopefully some people in the audience would join us as well. It'll be from hoping eight to four, eight to three, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, <laughs> 2.30, yeah, we'll set some bets. Um, if you can't make it to budget, or if you, you know, want to skip budget Saturday, there is a CPR AED first aid training starting at 9, p 9 a.m. from 9 to 4 at the public safety facility this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> might, might need some CPR after. Uh, um, and then in a few weeks, the Active Marksman Regional School Committee's budget Saturday will be on January 23rd starting at 8.30 in the junior high school library. Um, that does coincide with the MMA annual conference, but hopefully some of us can make it to either or both of those. Um, a couple upcoming events in town. There will be a forum on the changes and challenges in suburban police, policing featuring local police chiefs, including our own, um, hosted here in Acton on January 20th at 7.30 in town hall. And the Acton Boxborough United Way is presenting an evening with David McCullough Jr. on the pressures of college admissions and the value of living in the moment on Thursday, January 7th at 7 p.m. in the high school auditorium. And as a reminder, our next meeting will not be until January 25th due to the um, holiday in two weeks. And I think that is it from me, Mr. Manager. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce to the board our new Land East Director, uh, Matthew Selby, but he goes by Selby. Uh, he, uh, you know, like uh, there's Prince and Madonna and Cher. We have Selby. No, one word. Can't screw his name up. It's just one word. Um, as as the board realizes, the uh, um, he comes to us after uh, uh, a number of years as community development director in Ashland, and uh, uh, as. Uh, his roles in Ashland, he has done everything from natural resources to economic development to uh, to health and and uh, and zoning. So he's got a got a wealth of uh, knowledge. And in another life, he was a uh, he was a PR uh, PR guy. So brings a lot of skills to the table, and we're we're looking forward to, to working with him. It was uh, his first day today, so he's trying to learn all the characters and find out where the men's room is and, and all those type of things. So uh, we we welcome him. Um, I uh, just also wanted to uh, report to the board uh, last Wednesday, the 30th, uh, in the early afternoon, uh, one, our, our ladder truck uh, engine caught on fire while in, uh, in Station 3. Uh, fortunately, the fire was put out and the fire was just contained to basically the, uh, um, um, uh, the engine uh, compartment. Uh, some, um, some smoke uh, uh, damage, not a real lot of smoke damage in the station. Uh, Service Star came in to, uh, to clean it up. But uh, it looks like it's going to take at least three months for the ladder truck to, uh, to be repaired, it, it, feeling that, that they could replace the engine and repair, repair the, the front part. Uh, our insurance companies involved and also trying to find either a loaner or a rental ladder truck uh, in the interim. So uh, be more on that uh, as, as, as things develop, but it could have been a lot worse. The, the truck had just come back from a, uh, from a, um, a call. In fact, I think it was uh, the call where a, a, a young boy had uh, fallen through the ice in a pond off of Davis Road. So whatever happened, it, it, it caused an engine fire. And um, uh, fortunately, nobody was hurt, nor did we really have any damage to the fire station. Uh, finally, um, House Bill 3188, which is our uh, local bill to increase uh, liquor licenses by 16 and beer and wine uh, licenses by six, uh, will be uh, will have a hearing on Wednesday in front of the uh, the House uh, Consumer Protection uh, uh, 
committee, uh, which fortunately is is chaired by our, our state rep, uh, Jen Benson. So uh, Katie will be signing a letter uh, in support of that bill uh, to be read at that hearing on, uh, on Wednesday. And that's my report. All right, thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, we will start with our first hearing at 710, the Senior Center Study Committee Building Site Decision. <laughs> so if you guys want to come up. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Dean Charter. I'm presently serving as the chairman of the Senior Center Study Committee. Um, and with me is Sharon Mercurio, our COA director. And we have a number of members of our committee here as well, um, including uh, Peter Ashton, Chris Hamilton, Marion Maxwell, Mimi Flannery, Barbara Wilson, I'm sure there's others back there that I, I don't see, but we've, we've got a pretty good representation of the committee, and uh, Franny Osmond. What we'd like to do tonight is give you a brief presentation and ask for a couple of actions to be taken by the board. Um, and Without any further ado, we'll uh, we'll get right into the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I think Sharon's going to drive for us. So the uh, the charge, uh, as you know, the uh, you folks uh, formed the Senior Center Study Committee. Uh, we've been working on uh, on doing some study and looking at the feasibility of a new senior center for some months now. We did have some money uh, allocated to us at the end of last fiscal year. And with that, we hired uh, the firm of uh, Learner Lads and Bartell to do a feasibility study of, uh, of the sites and, uh, and sort of come up with some very rough ideas as to what we uh, envision for Senior Center. In, uh, in September, we were back before you just to confirm our charge. Uh, there had been some discussion about are we looking at a quote unquote senior center or are we looking at a community center for a larger group? And at that point, the selectmen voted to support a senior center study, senior center only approach. We had received and we, we discussed a couple of other um, possibilities. Um, uh, that were brought up and, and broached in some fashion at the September meeting, including whether or not a senior center should include some uh, other facilities, such as community services, uh, as in nursing, veteran service officer, or social worker. Um, we did talk a bit about what we thought was our preferred site for Arlington Street for the building. And we asked for, we said that we were going to ask for design money. Why are we here? When we walked out of the meeting in September, we had firm direction as to where we were going with the building, but we never actually got it confirmed as to what site we were going to use. Um, and we know that Sharon has submitted a budget request for next year for design funds. We want to reiterate the committee's support for those design funds. And it's somewhat timely because you know we're fast approaching town meeting. We've got a public forum tentatively scheduled for the 13th uh, in this room. So we really need to have some firm decisions nailed down in order to go ahead with that forum and the rest of our public outreach. There's been quite a bit of discussion, certainly amongst the committee, and I know amongst you folks, about 
including Human Services Department in with the Senior Center. The uh, how would it work? What would we do? Why? Uh, the committee has voted unanimously in favor of this model. Our thought is that it's a great way to reach out to the seniors and to the larger community by combining nursing, social work, veteran service officer, all in one place, so we've got sort of one-stop shopping. Uh, right now, if you've got an individual in need of services, they might start out at Town Hall, they might start out at 468 Main Street, they might start out at the Senior Center, and if they don't fit in the right queue, they get sent someplace else. And it, I don't think it serves anyone any good purpose to have somebody who's already stressed and needs services and say, well, okay, no, Town Hall's not the right place. You gotta go three miles south and find the senior center and speak with somebody there, or vice versa. It just doesn't make any sense. Also, many of those departments are single person or a very small department. They don't have a lot of backup. So if we can create this human services department, it will combine all these people. There'll be some backup, some cross training. Um, and if somebody comes in, regardless of whether they're under 60, over 60, a veteran or not, they go to this one spot and their services can be provided. So that the committee is very much in support of this. Our initial estimates dealing with the architect is it'll add about 4,000 square feet to the building. Now this bubble diagram you see here, this is just very conceptual, but it, it shows you some of the major functions of the building. And it shows how the, some of these building, some of these rooms could be open from one to the next so that if you have need for more space, you can open up uh, some sliding walls. We've got a lot of exercise room. Uh, we've got dedicated exercise space we've, we've listed as yoga slash gym. That's as big as the entire exercise space for the existing senior center. The distinction is that right now, that one room at the senior center, we have exercise there about 15 hours a week. And then the room has to be used for other purposes, such as, you know, bridge or art or lectures. So you can't do enough exercise. This room will be dedicated 100% for exercise, so if you can get enough people and enough instructors, you could provide exercise classes there 50 hours a week. So it's a vast improvement as far as the availability of, of that very highly desired service. We also have those multi-purpose rooms that are sort of in the center, sort of L-shaped rooms that would be used, one could be used for certain exercises as well, such as chair exercises. And the rooms could also be used for things like lectures, art classes. So we've got a lot more variety and a lot more options of things for people to do. We've got a much larger dining room. Uh, we've got sort of a lounge and a library area. Um, we have a central reception area so that when people come in, they're not in our existing building, if you come in, you're confronted with the bathrooms and two closed doors, that's it. This way you'd have somebody that could direct you, could welcome you. Uh, so I, I think it's a much better design. Obviously it's a much bigger building. And then on the other side, kind of in the blue and purple boxes, are the areas that we've allocated for the human services and for nursing. They would have their own separate entrances but there would be some communicating doorways through the rest of the building. Uh, each of those functions have their own unique security concerns, so we have to address them with the design of the building. But we think it gives us a lot of options and certainly makes life a lot friendlier for people in need of services. The site. We've looked at a number of sites, and I've, this is my third iteration on some sort of senior center study committee. We've looked at a number of different sites in this latest go-round. 
the NARA site that we looked at a couple of years ago uh, is really too small for our needs. There was also a lot of concern raised uh, when we went to town meeting the last time that NARA was too far out of the center of town. So we've, we've discarded that site. The Walker site where the old Kennedy landscaping was, we've looked at that, understand that, that to my understanding, that purchase of that site has not been finalized yet. I know at town meeting there was discussion that there would be a committee put together to look at possible long-term uses for the building, for the site, and we're not sure how long that would take. It's also a fairly small and congested site, and sort of an odd size. One of the discussions back uh, at town meeting uh, in favor of purchasing it was that was the feeling that a 20,000 square foot daycare center would be too large for the site uh, considering you'd need a hundred car parking lot. Basically a senior center is going to be 20,000 square feet with a hundred car parking lot. So you've, you're still creating a fairly congested site and we're we certainly have some concerns about the traffic on that site and the seniors pulling in and out of Main Street. So we're not keen at all on the Walker site and the committee has voted against that as well. The Arlington Street site is about 25 acres of land owned by the taxpayers of the town of Acton. It is uh, certainly totally under the town's control as part of the memorandum of understanding between the town and the regional school district. We've identified about five acres that appear favorable to build a new senior center. There's a fairly large scale map of Acton. You can see where the building is or would be. And there's a blow up of the site. Shows that at the back it does abut um, the backs of the houses on Lincoln Drive, for instance, but it is a very large site. During all three of these processes I've been involved with, there's been concern about trying to centrally locate a senior center with the desire of it would be great to have something that people would walk to. Well, with a town of 20 square miles, there's very few people are going to be able to walk to any site. But as far as central location, the site on Arlington Street is only 1.8 miles from Town Hall. It's 0.4 miles from St. Elizabeth's Church. It's 1.2 miles from the Acton Post, West Acton Post Office. It's 0.8 miles from the high school. And it's only two tenths of a mile from an entrance into Indian Village. So it's fairly close to some well-known sites in town and close to some fairly large population areas. There's a blow up of what our architect has worked out as a site plan. It shows the main building, uh, driveways all the way around it, and three parking bays. Each would be 25 to 30 cars. This is a very rough conceptual plan. As you look at the plan there, you'll see a lot of bubbles. And those bubbles represent vernal pools and wetlands. So this is why out of a 25 acre site, we think we've got five acres that are good. And there'll certainly have to be some shifting around to make sure that we've got the building in just the right spot. Why do we need a new senior center? Well, the existing building is, as we discussed, for instance, we've got one, one room to do almost all of our activities other than dining. So there's a lot of things, a lot of services that could be provided, um, lecture series, more art, more cultural activities. You can't book it any more heavily than it's already been booked without pushing out exercise. Something has to suffer. Um, there's insufficient parking. We've only got about 40 parking spaces and many times every one of them's filled. 
there's no way to make the parking lot any bigger we're on the top of a hill so the, we're just we've looked in previous iterations at how can we expand the building and bottom line is you really can't population of seniors is growing dramatically in 2010 and I'm grateful to Peter Ashton for providing these statistics for us and he's he's always been right on the uh, money when it comes to providing statistics for school growth so I think you know we've got a good resource there in 2010 16.7% of the population of Acton was seniors it's about uh, 2400 seniors the projection and the projection for 2025 is that 25 percent of the total population will be seniors that brings us up to 6,000 seniors so that the senior population is growing very quickly um, sad to say we're all getting there sooner or later um, so I think the need for this facility is growing tremendously um, so now's the time to do it where do we go for hit from here uh, we need support from the selectmen tonight we need to go to town meeting in April for the design funds we're looking at 300,000 um, whatever we get is what we would use if funding is approved at town meeting we would need to go immediately to designer selection we've hired LLB just to do the feasibility study we need to do a full designer selection we should have an RFP ready to hire a new designer it should be ready and virtually the next day after town meeting that should go out on the street to start the designer selection process bring a designer in start work on it um, it frankly is going to be a real steeplechase to get it ready but we think that we'll be ready with some good plans and firm enough numbers and firm enough design to go to town meeting in April of 2017 for the new building now everybody's worried about the bottom line and certainly as a taxpayer I'm concerned about that what are we talking for cost not the 300,000 but what's the second bite in April of 2017 we've been looking at somewhere between 17,000 and 20,000 square feet of construction construction costs for these sorts of buildings right now in the public sector are between 450 and 500 dollars per square foot so we're looking somewhere in the eight to ten million dollar range for this building depending upon what goes into it whether you have as the committee's recommended whether you have the extra space for the community services so we're looking at a total cost it's it's certainly something that needs to be bonded and it's not insignificant but we're probably looking at the uh, eight to ten million dollar range I had lunch today with a local builder who's involved in public construction told me he just opened the bids on a new fire station in another town that came out at six hundred and seventy dollars per square foot public construction costs in this gentleman's opinion have escalated by about a hundred dollars per square foot in four years so economic downturn or whatever has not shown itself to be a, uh, a major factor in public construction costs um, the building is just going to keep getting more and more expensive so I think it's imperative that we get something built soon uh, concludes my remarks uh, be happy to entertain any questions okay. thank you Dean and Sharon questions or comments from board members Franny, Lisa. I just want to thank people who came, who are users or future users of the Senior Center and the Senior Center Study Committee, and people from the Council on Aging Board that came tonight. Um, and I just think all this is a good idea from having worked on the Senior Center Study Committee and gone through the decision making. 
Um, yeah, I, I wasn't initially in support of the Arlington Street site, but I, it's sort of grown on me. <laughs> um, there are definite advantages that I can see to it. I mean, I really liked the idea of being downtown in Kelly's Corner, um, but people were concerned about traffic problems there. Um, I also like the idea of the combined center. So. Peter? Um, I'm just wondering what, uh, what backup you had for the 300 grand. We've had some issues recently with overruns on design costs. So um, how did you come up with that number? Well, we, uh, we spoke with the LLB, our architecture doing the feasibility study, and they know full well that we would certainly entertain their proposals, but that we are going to go out back into the marketplace to look for designers. So we're, they, they estimated that 300,000 would buy us a good schematic design, um, ready to go and justify a town meeting. It will not buy you construction documents. Uh, I'll say, okay. You know, full, okay. Yeah. full engineer, you know, architectural and engineering costs of a building are about 10%. Yeah. So, I mean, literally, you could be talking close to a million dollars for the architects and engineering fee. So, but what we think is that we've got a, a reasonable number um, that will give us enough of the details uh, that we can make a convincing presentation at town meeting. Okay, I, I also have some concerns about the Arlington Street site. I understand what you're saying. It seems to me that one of the issues with the current uh, senior center is, is its location. It's kind of out of sight, out of mind, very hard to find. Um, uh, we had a meeting of uh, um, the South Acton Train Station Committee there one time, and the, the, the guy that heads up the Assabet River Rail Trail Committee was supposed to meet with us. He couldn't find a place. Um, and I'm not sure the Arlington Street site addresses that concern. It seems to me, um, you know, there's not going to be any development of any amenities around that site um, in 20 years. Um, the population is going to be a lot bigger. Uh, everybody's going to have to drive there. Um, have you considered transportation? I mean, Kelly's Corner, the concept that we're talking with developers at Kelly's Corner is it's going to be a lot of downsizing. Really, the housing market now, for instance, if Kmart's developed, it'll be downsizing small apartments for elders who are downsizing out of their homes. Um, so I understand your concerns about Walker's property, and you know we were opposed to a 20,000 square foot facility on that site, but that location is just seems to be to be much more integrated into the town than the Arlington Street site doesn't seem to me to meet the complete streets policy to have that out there I don't know if you've talked to the transportation people about if you were on if you're in Kelly's corner you know the the, the new fixed route shuttle is going to be going right by there I'm sure people wouldn't be walking but at least they could get on the bus and get off there um, uh, maybe we could reroute the bus at some point to go to Arlington Street, but what was the committee's deliberations about those concerns? Well, I think I think the the impact we expect that most seniors are going to continue to want to drive their own vehicles to get to the senior center. Um, that certainly, you know, fixed route shuttle and the growth of public transportation will certainly have some impact on how seniors get around in the future, but um, I think we're focused more on the next five to 10 years rather than you know what might happen way off in the future. There's a great deal of concern about uh, the heavy traffic on Main Street. It would certainly not be as much of a peak of influx of vehicles as it would have been with the daycare center there, but I think there's a lot of concern amongst the committee and amongst the seniors that traffic can be really bad there. Um, certainly, it is a central location. Um, 
It is part of, you know, the main corridor in town. It's adjacent to the public safety building, so it's certainly desirable from that point of view, but uh, the traffic we think is a problem. We think of the shape and the configuration of the lot. Um, I know there's been a lot of discussion, which I'm not privy to, about the acquisition of the property and is the entire parcel going to actually come to the town or not? When is it going to come to the town or not? Um, these are all things that certainly nobody in the committee that I'm aware of, um, you know, selectman on the committee might know, but obviously she can't disclose any of this. So there are just too many imponderables about that site. Um, if we had a situation where you said today, we own the site, we own the whole thing, we're ready to go, and the selectmen are all in favor of putting it there and not have another study committee, um, then there could be a, certainly a serious discussion about it. But I think at this point, it's just too vague uh, as far as what's been brought to the committee. Um, so I just, we can't recommend it based on something that we don't know. So I, uh, I can't support it from that point of view, and, and that's pretty much been the discussion of the committee. Certainly, there's a lot of people that want to have something close to Kelly's Corner, but uh, that just does not seem to be in the cards. The way the building would be designed would be sort of specific to the site. Uh, if we don't have a specific site in mind, we, there's really not much point in spending $300,000 to design something. Um, we really need to have that nailed down. Uh, if, if things have changed, why well, we'd be certainly happy to talk about it, but uh, you know, we're now less than four months away from town meeting. Yeah, sure. Um, and I just wanted to add, what we were looking at was meeting the needs that we have right now. So parking is a huge issue and, and just overall program space. So location, yes, it is important, but a location can, that can meet all our needs is the most important right now. Okay, what's the size of the senior center now? You're going to 20,000 square 5, feet? 5,000 square 5,000, okay. Um, and on this, this kind of bubble, I guess you call it, or the schematic design here. You've got veterans and outreach. Outreach, is that the, the uh, social worker? Social the, worker, The human yes. resources, or not human resources, but the, the, out, the social worker. So they would share that space in this concept, I guess. Okay. Um, let's see. I think there was some discussion about the new space at the post office offering um, the town uh, some lease space. Uh, and even if we were to uh, support this and go to town meeting this year and get money to build next year, it's going to be four or five years, I assume, before a new building would actually be occupied. Um, I, I think you're looking you three have? years down the road before we move in. Okay, and I don't, I don't know. There was some discussion among uh, town folk that uh, maybe the senior center could move to the post office for the next for that interim period of time lease some space there that would be a lot bigger than what you have now so I don't know if you want to pursue that or have ever talked about it but that was just thrown out there at one point I think um, as a possibility short term until something new could get built I like very much the concept of including nursing and uh, veterans and, and the social worker in the building. Again, I, I have concerns about the location also with people who access those kind of services being, you might not have cars <laughs> being able to get there. So um, those are my concerns. Thank you. Janet? Um, you answered my one question about how long uh, the building would be pending before it was ready to move in and you said three years, so, so April 2020 optimally. Um, you would have a building? <laughs> well, I think if, if we get construction funding in April of 2017, um, we would hope to be ready to go out for construction bidding probably in the late winter. Uh, so we'd probably be in February of March of 2018 before the, we'd have the bids out. And then, you know, construction period, 
I think we'd be looking at probably 18 months. So, yeah, I think your, your time frame is about right. And then move in. You never know what bumps in the road you're going to hit. But uh, I think, you know, 12 to 18 month construction period seems reasonable. So it's, it's a few years down the road. Um, uh, Peter sort of alluded to the issue, uh, not necessarily to move the senior center into temporary space, but I'm wondering whether you've thought about what you're going to do in the interim uh, while the new building is pending, um, because if, if space currently is such a, a crunch, I mean, there have been numerous discussions in the past about having satellite locations and all that sort of thing, but I didn't know if you've Thought, talked about or thought about or, or whatever about sort of temporary arrangements to ease the space crunch at the current location? Um, we've extended schedule. Um, for the most part, programs used to end around 2.30, 3 o'clock, and then we were open more for the social service aspect. Um, but we have been adding afternoon exercise classes, which initially people were a little resistant to sign up for, but I think now... Um, they're filling up just as well um, so I did ask this coming fiscal year to um, extend hours for my program coordinator um, so we can continue to do that to continue to program later into the afternoon to make the most use of our space and and then I I do like the idea of including some other functions at the senior center because obviously I was an advocate for some sort of community center a little more inclusive um, um, I do know from having gone to some existing community centers that have some of the, the uh, human services services in, in the same facility that there is this concern that you mentioned about, well, it's not just security, but it's privacy. Uh, people, some of the people who use those services don't want to sort of walk into a big lobby where everybody sees them. So there's a, it's important to have some sort of private entrance or, or whatever. Um, and. The other question I had is obviously the idea was to better serve people who are also seniors, uh, but you know the fact is there are going to be people who are not seniors who will make use of those services, and I think it's unfortunate that they will then have to sort of turn around and leave because they're they're not eligible to use the the building during the day because it's going to be limited. Um, I would still encourage um, some flexibility with regard to the space. Um, I think that there can be some symbiosis and sort of may, real dynamic activity um, if you have multi-generation there, especially given that it's going to be another few years before the building is done. And it will be, it will be people like me who are, you know, right in the heart of, of the senior population uh, and the needs may be different. But anyhow, um, I think that's all. Um, the only, the other thing Peter did talk about was the site, uh, and I always got the impression because I've been listening to the presentations year after year about different sites and st uh, starting with the Nara, and I always got the impression that Arlington Street was at the bottom of the list for a number of reasons. I think in part because it was a difficult site uh, due to the wetlands, among other things. And so, I I don't know if you. I know that. I know that at some point you were looking at other parcels that prior senior study committees had looked at other properties in town and I just didn't know whether you had just these were the best parcels you had come across I know that you looked at leasing and decided that that really wasn't um, sensible from a financial standpoint so I don't know if there were there were no parcels out there that were owned by somebody else that were would have been suitable for as a site um, Arlington Street we did like um, last time I was involved that was one that we really liked however it was at that point owned by the schools so um, the town yeah. <laughs> or, the, or the school had part ownership it was not on the table at that time um, maybe Steve can clarify I, I think <laughs> some of the well the, the, the property was bought in 62 uh, for the purpose of potentially building a, a, a school but it was never um, transferred the property was never transferred to the care and custody of the school committee it always remained with the SWAC yeah I remember that um, because I, I, I think that there was a desire for all of the property that the town held for the schools to go 
everything to go over to the schools and then they would let back what <laughs> but you know we held on to Arlington Street so all right great thank I, you very much I think the other the other issue as far as other sites that were looked at um, what I refer to is Senior Center 1.0 um, seven or eight years ago that I was involved in that committee uh, Mike Gowing was involved with it um, they looked at a number of sites virtually every town owned parcel out there uh, the town owns a huge amount of land but a lot of it's tied up as conservation land and really can't be used uh, one site that did look at which it's a bit confusing it's also located on Arlington Street but it's a site uh, it's a parcel that's over in West Acton um, and it's between Arlington Street and Route 111 near the Juniper Ridge subdivision um, that if you look down on on a tax atlas it looks like a desirable site however there were two streams that ran through it um, it was land that was given to the town back in the early 60s because it was not considered developable by the environmental standards in 1960 so you can imagine what it's like now um, but that was a site that was cast off then so sometimes people say well we looked at Arlington Street and it's not a good site they might have been referring to that site as well um, the site that we're looking at now on Arlington Street between Route 2 and Newtown Road there was some preliminary septic testing done on it uh, we do have a favorable report from the Board of Health that it appears that you could build a building of about 20,000 square feet there uh, that would house the same functions including dining room as our existing senior center so that it appears favorable from that point of view uh, so I, I think it's a better site than you would think uh, obviously there's some challenges as there is with every site but uh, uh, we still think that it's a that it's a very viable site uh, people are not going to well some people will walk there um, because they live in the neighborhood in the sidewalks I will walk there Peter Ashton will walk there probably not too many other people will because um, folks drive um, one of the problems we've had with designing any building is we need a hundred car parking lot but all the seniors all want to park in the ten spaces that are immediately adjacent to the building so uh, it's a problem uh, but I think we still think it's a good site sure. I just I also wanted to add that um, uh, I know that for for the springtown meeting there's going to be at least one other big project that's going to be competing it's the it's the uh, Minuteman tech the building project and I don't know what the schools have in mind but I you know I, I hope you keep in mind that um, you won't be the only you might not be the only big big project out there I mean certainly already we know about some proposals that are going to be on that were deferred to Springtown meeting that are going to involve big um, amounts of spending so just keep that in mind when you're making your pitch because uh, I, I think it's could be a, a challenging Springtown meeting for us this year um, with some taxpayers maybe being a little bit unhappy I don't know but anyhow thank you Thanks. Any questions or comments? Uh, the only thing that I had was your, um, you know, human services stuff. Uh, I was wondering how were you planning on what you're planning on the balance as far as moving town staff and or adding town staff or and or adding staff to that area. Um, you know, I, I think, and, and one of the, one of the things that uh, we want to. Um, to look at in the FY17 budget is actually the structure of a human services department uh, because as Dean alluded to earlier uh, right now uh, the veteran service officer really doesn't have any clerical support uh, the community uh, social worker does not um, nursing does Sharon does to some extent so whether there's ability with existing staff to share or not we'd have to determine um, but if not would pr I would I would guess would one clerical position would probably be adequate okay so um, I just wanted to thank you guys for coming and, and for the committee for doing all this work and for checking in with us um, I appreciate you know Peter's comments about 
the location and I you know I think Kelly's Corner would be ideal if there was a property that I thought was a better fit but unfortunately I don't think the Walker property works I mean we fought a lawsuit and went to town meeting and said a 20,000 square foot building with all this parking would be horrible here you know um, so it would be a bit odd to then turn around and say except for this 20,000 square foot building with a bunch of parking this would be great you know so I, I have concerns about that I, I don't think it would be that great um, and I uh, you know I we also at the town meeting when we uh, you know asked for uh, uh, permission to buy the land said we would put together a study committee to look at what that use should be and so I also would feel odd kind of just deciding that on our own I think we'd be going back on what we said so um, and then as for Arlington Street I mean you know I, I sort of defer to the committee on that uh, you know I haven't been sitting on the committee and looking at all of the available options and you guys have so um, to me if, if that is the one that's come up as the best site in your opinion I, I sort of defer to that um, and then I'll echo my colleagues and saying I like the idea of combining the human services departments um, I agree with Janet that I think if there's a, some way to design it with a separate entrance that would make the most sense um, you know obviously this bubble graph isn't <laughs> doesn't show all the doors and whatnot um, but I think that there is a lot of synergy there and, and it would be good both for the um, you know people that uh, use these departments but I think also for the people that work in them um, you know I know they coordinate a lot but they're in you know a couple different buildings right now and so it having them all in one place would just make it a lot easier and hopefully you know come up with some new ideas of ways to work together um, so for me I you know I'm very supportive of the the kind of questions you've asked of us tonight of the site and the combined human services department and then support for the design funds as well um, and before I ask for public input, um, I'm going to read the hearing notice that I'm very late in reading, actually two. Uh, uh, the first one is for our 730 hearing, which is the Acton Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on January 4th, 2016 at 730 in the Francis Faulkner hearing room at Town Hall on the application of Acton Coffee House, 525 Massachusetts Avenue, under section 140 of the Massachusetts General Laws for a common victualler license. And we will come back to that when we are done with this discussion. And our 735 hearing, the Acton Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on January 4th, 2016 at 7.35 p.m. continued from December 21st, 2015 in the Francis Faulkner Hearing Room at Town Hall on the application of Acton Management Inc. 69 Great Road under Acton Zoning Bylaw 10.4 for a site plan special permit number 11 slash 06 slash 15 dash 458 proposed development of four single family dwellings with associated private drive at 267 Great Road. And this one, the applicant has requested and agreed to a continuance to February 2016 at 7:10 p.m. Okay, uh, thank you for indulging that. Uh, is there any questions or comments from audience members? If you could just come up and hit the little face button and say your name and address, please. Hi, I'm Lynn Osborne. Uh, I know I've been here before, <laughs> and I'll keep coming. Um, I would uh, hope and urge that the Board of Selectmen would accept this plan. Um, I would also urge that any plan that would take seniors out onto Route 27 or into Kelly's Corner would not be looked at. I, I deliver Meals on Wheels and two of the places that I really dread delivering to is anything in the Kelly's Corner location or anything that makes me have to make a left turn, especially onto 27, and I think I'm still a pretty good driver. Um, there has been, as far as I can un understand it, almost unanimity and delight with the Arlington Street site as it's been discussed by users of the Senior Center. Um, I, at one time, was very strong on NARA. I was extremely disappointed in the vote that we had a couple of years ago. I now think it was one of the best things that happened to us, that we, it made us step back, look at other sites, look at other issues, but I am extremely supportive of the Arlington Street site. I also hope, since I've been dealing with senior centers since it was in the basement of the, Beth, of the Baptist Church in West Acton, that we can finally still, almost in my lifetime, get started on it. So I would urge the, the support of the motion. Thank you very much.
Good evening. Mention was made of the uh, four houses to be built, uh, proposed to be built on 267 Great Road, and the fact that a, uh, the applicant has requested an extension to February 22nd, 2016 at 710. Uh, knowing that that extension might be asked for and might be granted, to, well, first, one question, has that extension been granted? Yes, I mean, the applicant and the board agreed to it, so we've approved the extension to that. We're actually talking about the senior center right now, though, so okay. I'd ask that we kind of keep our comments to that discussion, and we can get back to that at the end of that, but I, I don't like to mix issues. All just right. <laughs> okay, thank you, sorry. Is there anybody else here who would like to speak about the senior center? Okay, um, then I think it would be useful to have a vote um, of support or not for the uh, at least some are all, I think, particularly the site and whether or not to combine the human services department. Um, so I don't know if there's anybody that wants to make a motion to any or all of those effects. I move that we um, give the Senior Center Study Committee the go ahead to um, pursue the Arlington Street site as they come to town meeting. Okay. You want to do them separately? I mean, yeah, do, should we be as formal as to say we're approving the Arlington Street site as the site that we're pursuing? I mean, I, I, I think I, just, I think your motion was fine. I just okay. didn't know if you wanted to combine it with also. Okay. Oh, I was going to separate it. Sure, separate we can do it. separate. Is there anybody that would like to second that? I'm sorry. The motion is to su support to the Arlington to, Street to site. To the Center 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 Study Committee to pursue the Arlington Street site. I'll um, second it. In their Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Yeah, I, I would just like to say I'm going to I am going to vote in support of the uh, of the uh, motion. Um, I, again, I have strong reservations about uh, the location, but um, I do support the process. We appointed this committee to advise us on it. I know how long this has been going on. I am uh, in support of moving this along and getting a new facility finally built, and uh, I trust the committee. Um, um, so a recommendation is based on uh, uh, all of their uh, reviews of the sites and the past history of this thing, so uh, I will support the committee's recommendation. And I, I want to sure. note also um, that I was the only one on the committee that actually voted against. We, we decided not to pursue leasing, and I was the only person that didn't because there was a site at, in Kelly's Corner that was possible to lease for about the same amount of money. Um, so 20 years down the road, you wouldn't have a building to take care of, but you also wouldn't have a building. Um, but it was about the same money. And, um, but listening to people's concerns about traffic especially, I, I was glad that Lynn described <laughs> how you feel about going to Kelly's Corner. Um, I think I tend to avoid left turns onto those streets too. And I can sort of defer to people that are older and are using the senior center and have these opinions about Kelly's Corner. I decided to go with their opinion. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Okay. I, I move that we, what was the other issue? Oh, uh, the, the human services. I move that we um, pursue a combined human services and senior center. And with separate entrances, which are indicated by the arrows on there, by the way. Oh. Um, I know that is just looks like bubbles, but it's sort of a conceptual um, plan that does include separate entrances, oh. but connection within the building. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The last one was about the funding for the design I you know I don't know if we want to vote on that tonight or if it's something that you want to talk about more in kind of at budget Saturday um, we'll be talking about right. it budget Saturday so I think <laughs> that would be sort of my recommendation if you guys don't mind waiting for <laughs> a few more days for that vote okay anything else you need from us tonight no wonderful thank you so much thank you very much um, Okay, so I think there was somebody who had a question about the 735 hearing, and I'm happy to hear that now, if you wanna, about the 267 Great Road. 
And can you just make sure the red light is turned on in this? I think you gotta hit the button. Yep, yeah, very good. My name is Andy Beggs, and I live at 1 Gabriel Lane in Acton. I'm in a butter to the uh, proposed development at 267 Great Road. I'm also a member of the Acton Meadows Condominium Trust, the condominium association which includes 25 additional houses behind me on Gabriel Lane. I'd like to ask uh, respectfully to the um, uh, Board of Selectmen if today is a time to talk, uh, talk about that or if rather we would speak on February 22nd. Um, honestly, I think February 22nd would be the more appropriate time. Um, they've So they've asked for an extension mostly because they submitted the site plan and our um, various departments sent back comments and they just needed more time to respond to those. So they'll be sending revised plans and bringing those to the public hearing on the 22nd and that's when the developers will be there and when we'll sort of discuss the project publicly. I, I understand and uh, I, would, I would just like to note if it were to be noted anywhere or just noticed that uh, knowing that an extension would probably be granted tonight as we saw it last night on the website uh, there are 12 representatives 12, 12 members of the uh, Acton Meadows Condominium Trust here at, at the meeting tonight thank okay. you great yep sure um, I want to encourage you to talk talk to the developer talk to continue to talk to neighbors because um, I find there's a lot of pressure right at the meeting and there's all this time between now and February 22nd to try to have conversations and not wait until here to come face to face to talk about these issues thank you very much Peter uh, I'm the selectman assigned to the project I've read all of the submittals so far the trust is this the Gabriel Lane group yes it is okay your your concerns are documented in in the submittals that we we're reviewing um, um, it might be that the developer asked for time to kind of address those issues I mean I, I think the uh, the design review committee also had some concerns about the density of these of these homes that the developer wants to put in so I mean it's it's been raised as an issue um, we will be talking about it on the 22nd but I, I would uh, second uh, Franny's point that any outreach you can do to the developer or the people in planning to um, kind of see if you can solve it somehow before you know come to a resolution that works for everybody um, before the hearing that would be the preferable way to go it may not be possible but yes. certainly any attempt to do that would certainly be helpful uh, thank you Ms. Osmond and uh, Mr. Barry and uh, some a, a a group from has has been meeting or has met uh with mr steinberg to begin to discuss this so we we take your uh, recommendation seriously Great. thank you very much thank you and again you know you're always welcome to send us things in the meantime as well and all of those comments are put into the packet you know in our public for the meeting on the 22nd but i agree with my colleagues discussions beforehand are great um and then obviously you're we more than welcome you at the hearing on the 22nd as well so thank you I'm a member of the Gabriel Lane community and we would we are not mentioned as the abutters but we are directly impacted by it so we have raised our concerns and we would appreciate if the town can include us in the discussions and we are in discussion with Mr. Steinbeck also and hopefully we will address all these concerns beforehand but it would also help us if we are in the loop from the other side also, just how the discussions are going and what is happening behind the scenes. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate you coming. Yeah. I believe so, because they've been, yeah. Uh, that's a, yeah, Steve. Well, Butters and Alyssa usually uh, so many feet away, right. so I would have, would have to check into it. Under state law, it has to be so many feet away, you get notification. We'll, we'll have to check. It's sort of a legal thing, but just because they have to, the uh, developers, you know, have to pay to notify Butters, and so there's legal 
law, you know, about who's an abutter. Um, so we can check into who qualifies for that to make sure they, they have the appropriate list, but I don't think we're allowed to necessarily just add people to it. I mean, legal requirements aside, is there some way for them to, I mean, somebody mentioned planning department. I mean, just getting, if somebody representative can be included on, you know, email notification or something, if planning is going to be talking with somebody or whatever, it'd be helpful to just sort of get the discussion moving. Um, it's good that they're already apparently having some discussions with the developer because sometimes that can be very difficult. But, you know, I think, I think that formal notice notification aside, I think that if, if there are some concerns, it would be good if they could have more time to talk about them uh, other than at our meeting because obviously there are constraints on, on what we can do here. So. Sure. I think we can ask planning to see. Yeah. Have you been in touch with the planning department at all? You, yeah. Roland and Chris, Kristen? I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah. Certainly, if you request that they keep you up to date with any changes or, you know, notifications that are going out, they, they should, I would assume, do that for you. Okay. All right. Thank you for coming. Okay. So going back to our 730 hearing, and, and I apologize, um, is there anybody here from Acting Coffee House? Oh, wonderful. Do you mind coming up? You can sit up here if you'd like. Um, if you could just turn on one of the microphones and introduce yourself and uh, what you're asking for in terms of your uh, common victuals license. Sure. I'm uh, William Ray, the uh, co-owner of Acton Coffee House, and uh, we're applying for a common victuals license um, for uh, our new cafe at 525 Massachusetts Avenue. We're currently doing business at 342 Great Road uh, and are moving. Are there any questions from the board members? Franny? I was surprised that it was so small. I mean, how many seats do you have at your present location on Great Road? 18. So it's, we're, we're going down to, we, we, we are sort of in conversation with Matthias about <laughs> Rosenthal, about Rosenfeld, about uh, possibly having a couple more. But yeah, it, 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 it's, it's fewer, which is not good. We're not greatly uh, excited about that. but. Um, but it's a much, much nicer space, and we feel like we're going to be plugged into the community in a way that is part of the original conception of the cafe in this new space. So it's a worthwhile sacrifice if we have to give up the two seats. Yeah, I was, I'm was. i sorry to see the other place go. This one, I love the location just yes. where I happen to live. But, um, <laughs> but this is still, I feel, unfair because um, I know it's such a nice place to go and Thank you very much. Yes, yes. We, we Some of our customers are telling us, you know, please don't go. And others are saying, yes, that's close to where I live. But I just, I'm retired and uh, I, doing one is all I can manage. <laughs> is there any room for growth there? I mean, in terms of, is there any room for growth in terms of um, the Well, seating? I mean, I, th there are definitely some things that I want to do because there's the event space upstairs. That's one of the draws. So mm -hmm. I'm planning to try to have some poetry readings and some music and some theater and things. So. That's something that wasn't possible in the current space. And, and again, uh, Matthias is much more uh, interested in that sort of event. I'll just say that I'm the opposite of Franny because this one's a little further for me. So I was <laughs> <laughs> to see whatever and I was like, wait a minute. I was like, oh, I'm further away. But <laughs> that's all right. It's still not that far. Um, great. OK. Does anybody, yeah, I, are there I any questions or comments yeah. from the audience? I mean, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sorry to that West Acton is going to be so highly ca know, caffeinated right. and, and beery, you know, while those of us in other parts of town that are more convenient to your current location are going to have to go farther for our, our hit of caffeine so, and other things. So, but, I, yeah, I, I did time it to, that it's seven minutes. So that's what I've been telling people that are a right, bit so. unhappy. <laughs> seven minutes, 3.5 miles. Oh, well, okay. Uh, Luckily, both spots are on the new cat bus. I don't know if you're familiar, but we That's have a new bus going around town. Around, around yeah, not the, the one from the train station. It does go by the train station, but it also yeah, has been going around around town. But yes, is, yeah. it, both of those locations, your old and the new, are right on the That's cat. excellent. Yeah, Matthias said something about that, and I wasn't, I hadn't heard anything about it. So that's really great. Yeah, Jane. 
Can I move to approve the application of Akin Coffee House uh, under Section 140 of the Mass General Laws for a common victual license? Second. Okay, any other comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you, and I apologize for the That's delay. Okay. Thank you very much. Tonight. All right, next up is the Community Preservation Act project application discussion, and I am going to kick that over to Peter. Okay, I think I mentioned this briefly at the last meeting. Um, we're not, I'm not actually asking um, the selectmen to rank uh, these town proposals uh, tonight. I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about what's happening with the CPC and consideration of these proposals and ask the uh, chair to put this on the uh, agenda for the next meeting. Uh, for one thing, uh, I, I sent around a uh, list of the projects that we're considering and the dates when we're interviewing um, applicants for those projects. It's different than this sheet you have in front of you. Um, and I don't frankly know what happened. I think this is one uh, aspect of why it might be a good idea to wait further into the process to, for the selectmen to um, give our priorities to the CPC about these town applications than do it as soon as we uh, get, get them uh, up front. Uh, the health department trail through time uh, proposal is not being considered by the uh, CPC. Uh, as far as I'm aware, we didn't get a formal proposal from the health department for that. Uh, I missed a meeting where uh, apparently uh, Doug and uh, the woman who's, uh, whose name escapes me right now, but who's been instrumental in developing the trail through time, came and spoke with the committee, but uh, they may have said that they were considering this for the future, but as of right now, we don't have a feasibility study, so you can cross that off your list. Um, the Historic District Commission, we never got a proposal from. I can't remember when we, when we were first presented these from the town, whether these two projects were actually included. I guess the trail through time was, but it never made it to the CPC for some reason. And the Historical District Commission is in the email that you sent out uh, that, that has the proposals, but we never got that at the CPC. Don't ask me what happened, uh, it just didn't ever come up so those two are not being considered uh, I did send out the list and again th these are the ones that we are considering it does include the other uh, private uh, uh, privately owned uh, facilities in town that are looking for CPC funds um, but I'm not asking the, this selectman to rank those proposals against the town. I'm just simply, we're going to be asking the CPC thinks it would be very helpful to them to have the selectman rank these proposals. But one reason why I thought it would be good to wait till the end of January is the uh, Recreation Commission is coming before the CPC this Thursday. We have about a million two to hand out in um, uh, funding this year of CPC money um, for between the town money and the state match. Um, the total requested funds are two million four hundred thousand. Obviously, we're not going to be able to fund uh, half of those. If you take the recreation um, uh, requests alone, that's a million and a half, which exceeds our funding limits by some three hundred thousand dollars. So, one question we have for the recreation people who come before us Thursday is well, how do they rank these uh, proposals in their minds as to uh, if they could fund one and not the other which ones would they prioritize so that's kind of the concept uh, we're not voting at the CPC until February so if this if the selectmen were to uh, prioritize these hold on to your index cards um, until the end of January, um, then we would have that information when, when we got down to voting and uh, actually uh, funding these proposals. So that's Peter, just to clarify, on the 25th, you're just asking us to rank the town proposals, though, correct? Not yes. all of them? Okay. Right. All right. I believe there's and I think there are, I think there are eight of them. One of the ones on the list I sent around is the administrative support, the CPA, the Act itself allows um, towns to um, fund 
uh, or allows the CPC to fund up to 5% of the total amount that they give out uh, to reimburse the town for all their administrative expenses. I don't think it's necessary for us to rank that as you know one of the proposals against other projects. Um, so I think there are actually eight town projects that um, we would consider. Okay. And there's another Peter that we'd like to speak. <laughs> um, Mr. Barry had shared with me this list ahead of time, and I just a couple of other questions and corrections actually. Um, the open space acquisition set aside is actually 470, not 450, because it includes um, a $20,000 request for replenishment of the acquisition and preservation fund, which, as you know, we use to fund appraisals, environmental reviews, and that type of thing for for open potential open space purchases. Um, the other, I was going to mention the administrative support. I'm sure the town manager would like you to rank that, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think I'm the only one that questions that each year, and, and, and my question has already been answered this year, so that's fine. Um, the, the one other thing that, that uh, I'm at least, as chair of the CPC, am not aware of is the Jones Playground renovation is shown as being withdrawn here. We have an application, and it's on the agenda for Thursday night. So if we, we were t we were told by uh, by uh, uh, Tom Tidman and Kathy they were they withdrawing. are going to withdraw. It. Right. Good. That'll make our meeting Thursday night a little shorter. <laughs> 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 and, and I think Peter's suggestion about uh, pri having the recreation director prioritize those projects is good. So if that word can get to her before Thursday night, that would help too. So, thanks. Uh, just a couple of other things. The, the, the Assabet River Green and Blue Trail was withdrawn. We did get an application right, for that. That's but on then our list. It does say withdrawn. withdrawn. Right. Yeah. That, that, that was withdrawn. On this one, withdrawn. it says withdrawn. Oh, you, you're have. holding oh, okay. your, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> uh, and it doesn't appear, let's see, we've got housing services for $47,000. That's the group in so. Sudbury that, or in Concord that, that monitors the low-income housing but also we had the Acton Community Housing Corporation which I don't think comes through us may just apply directly uh, for sixty thousand uh, dollars that's not on this list but we are considering which would seem to me to be a town project I don't know how you feel about that Peter whether we would can well, include uh, if that you, if you if you include that one Peter then what do you do about the Acton Housing Authority they have a request too for I think it's forty three thousand. Uh, I, yeah, I see you know, the, the community housing corporation more as a town board than the housing authority. Uh, but, but I tend to agree, and I frankly don't recall in the past whether the selectmen have included that on their list. I think if they want to, they can. Okay. Well, that's those is that, that's a question. Yeah. Well, I guess you might you might go back and look in prior years whether that's been on the list or not. I don't right. think it has. I don't think so. Yeah, they do not come. So. I guess they don't come through us. They just right. apply separately as a separate corporation. Right. I, I, I think the reason the, the the reason the other one does is because that's really goes through the planning department. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from the audience? Okay, so we will do this again on the 25th with a right. different I'll, list. I'll have more this information list was just about from what, okay. Yeah, from what we originally had gotten, and I think some of these didn't go forward and okay. stuff, so it just wasn't 100% updated. That one. Um, okay, good. All right, number five, selectmen to vote on special town meeting. Mr. Manager, do you want to? Well, as, as we discussed at, at the last meeting, um, there's a new proposal to amend the regional uh, school agreement for the Minuteman uh, uh, vocational tech. Uh, uh, the Minuteman school committee indicated they would like uh, all the uh, 16 member communities to have a special town meeting on that amendment prior to March 1st. Um, as I reported last time, we, we checked on the availability of, of the auditorium at, at, at the high school. Uh, the 1st, 2nd, and 29th were the best nights. Um, 29th I would remind everybody is is the uh, night before the uh, presidential primary so the town clerk really doesn't want to do the 29th um, and we had discussed Tuesday the the second as, as a potential date and uh, in my recommendation would be that the board 
call the town meeting for February 2nd, uh, open and close the warrant tonight and have, have just the one article um, uh, that has been uh, supplied to us by Minuteman. Um, any other, Janet? No. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, I move that we call special town meeting for Tuesday, February 2nd, and that we open and close the warrant with one article uh, addressing the proposed amendments to the regional school agreement for the Minuteman district. Do we do warrant article recommendations after this? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. that's that's later. We don't do it right now. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, I have a quick question. I guess I don't know. There's another article in this. That, that's if we wanted to withdraw okay. from the district. Yeah. But yeah. as far as I know, I don't think. Okay. Has every other district scheduled a meeting? I, I, don't uh, I know, know a few have. Concord is doing it. I think the Thursday of the same week, whatever that's the fourth, maybe. Um, I'm not sure how many other Lex communities. Lexington is scheduled, and I don't remember. Uh, and Arlington has scheduled, and and I I haven't. I think we have. We've been out of touch. The board of selectmen reps have been out of touch over the holidays, so uh, I don't know what the latest status is. I could ask. Um, yeah, it'd be nice if everybody's stepping up and doing this. But I assume Boxborough has is going to be calling a special town meeting since they part of the problem. But it seems like it would be. It seems like it would be maybe we could save some money for some of our towns if we combined. Boxborough and Acton could have their town meeting both at the high school or something. I don't um, know that that would be legal or... I don't know, like we could... Be oh, if there's such a short time, town meetings, you know, 7 to 7.30 is one, and that's, you know, one follows might, the other. There might be a lot of discussion, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just think, trying to think, because I just had to put in a word for someone who complained how many town meetings we've had in the last year, <laughs> and they were... Um, it, it was hard on them. They said it was hard get out in the evenings and um, what did you say three three yep. special or total total this will be yeah I this will hear be. four town this meetings is a, this is a new year though we'll so it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I just thought I would um, right. pass on, along that concern and hope that we make, do all the things to make this as accessible as possible for people with disabilities to well, complain yeah. about everything <laughs> And I mean, I agree, it's not, I don't think any of us here want to have a lot of special town meetings. It's not particularly fun to schedule them and arrange them and, and do them. But things, it's just a year that a lot has a come cost, up. Yeah. I have to say, I actually enjoy town meetings. I find they're a really, they really promote community spirit and I feel very connected to my neighbors. <laughs> so I, I don't mind having them, but I feel I should acknowledge the people that find them. Do you know if the regional school district has voted on the building uh, project yet? I think they were doing that later. I think they were going to do that later. Um, okay, so the plan would be that would be on the agenda for the, yeah, I think for the it, regular I think town that they would, Yeah, they would, yeah. they would vote it so that they would, the 60-day period would kick in and be, you'd have to basically do something by early April or something like that um, if you oppose and of course then you have the option of having yeah. your regular town meeting anyway yeah that they're yeah they're not okay. doing something until February for that okay we have a motion a second any other discussion all right all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed any abstentions okay and Janet can we assign you to that article as well might as well just do that now as a excuse me can we assign you that article as the <laughs> as like yeah yeah that's fine that's person. fine okay. you can put off recommending it until yeah. later once we have more information so people are having a hard time hearing tonight it sounds very low to me all over i'm wondering if people on tv land are having trouble i wouldn't be able to assess <laughs> that. i think the microphones are a bit lower yes but i don't know I, well, I don't know. Let me go. I think they're on. You say it's hard to hear, so maybe. So well, I I think if we if we all spoke like this, right? But but I think if we're talking in our norm, normal tone of voice, it's fine. Yeah, Sounds yeah. Normal. Well, yeah, right. off mic, but yeah, I had yeah I had a little trouble hearing Ching Sung over hmm. there, but or we're just getting old. <laughs> getting old. There you go. Yeah, that's louder. All right. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, really loud. I'm gonna wait for. 
All right, number six, special, speaking of having extra meetings, uh, special selectman meeting to discuss budget February 1st, 2016. Steve, you'd like to? Well, under, under the town charter, see, I've now cranked it up. It's probably too loud for TV now. <laughs> um, uh, under, under the town charter, um, uh, the Board of Selectmen has to recommend a budget to be transmitted to the Finance Committee 60 days prior to town meeting. So town meeting being April 4th, uh, uh, I forget when the 60th day is, but it's it's right around the, the special town meeting uh, date we just set. So in, in discussing this with the Chair, Monday, February 1st is a uh, off night for the Board. So our suggestion was that we hold a special meeting to uh, to discuss the budget crew will have budget Saturday obviously this this Saturday and then uh, the board can finalize and make their budget recommendation that would be transmitted to Finance Committee unless anybody has anything going on Monday February 1st that they absolutely cannot move we will schedule a meeting for them so moved well, I don't think we need to oh I think we're just gonna do it <laughs> <laughs> so, <It's fine>. but <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't need about it. I just need to. Um, okay, number seven, uh, Rex Lane Modular Home Gifts Discussion. I will also. Well, we, we did discuss this at the last meeting. Uh, I think the main question the board had asked is whether it was an all or nothing proposition. In other words, do uh, we have to accept all three modulars or can we take uh, one, two, or how many we want. Uh, so the answer is the board uh, could accept two if, if they were so inclined. And uh, 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 you may recall that, uh, that the proposal uh, put forth by recreation is that two of the modular homes be u utilized up by Miracle Field for, uh, for a, uh, accessible bathrooms and that uh, the other mod modular home be placed roughly where the um, uh, volleyball uh, uh, pit is right now for uh, bathrooms uh, for the uh, Bruce Friedman Rail Trail. And both those projects are in front of the CPC. Are there questions from the board? I, I listened to that whole discussion today. I'm not sure I got every detail. Um, but I, I liked the idea from the beginning of having all three because I liked the idea of a solution for the bike trail which I think will be a very welcoming thing for people coming through Acton and so I didn't see why not I mean I Lot realized money. that there was a cost to put them in but it sounded like there was more of a cost if we built them from scratch and I think we will have to deal with the um, bathroom needs of the bike trail anyway so that's why I didn't see why but, uh, I'm sorry you know, go ahead I think one of the questions is whether the CPC is going to fund these. I mean, that's, there's a million dollars in funding to install these, build the septic systems. So the question would be if we accept the gift and then the CPC votes not to fund one or the other or both or only partially fund them, what happens with the buildings? In the meantime? Well, well, the proposal that, uh, that Tom Tidman had made was basically that uh, the foundation work be be put in with the acceptance of these gifts. So I think that cost is like sixty thousand dollars. So basically, if we accept the gift, put the foundation in, we're into this project with with or without CPC. I would say. Right, and I think just to kind of summarize the discussion from our last meeting for you was that um, I think as a board we also felt that the um, Miracle Field one was sort of a bit further along. There's an organization that, you know, has offered su financial support for that. And, you know, they have a history of being able to raise money and to support these projects. Our feeling was also that, A, they'd probably be able to offer support that the CPA, or the CPC would then feel more kindly towards, and they tend to, um, uh, approved projects that have kind of outside support and then if CPA didn't fund all of it or none of it or whatever there's there's kind of some backup there that could help the town offset some of these costs and our concern with the Bruce Freeman one is that the um, friends of the Bruce Freeman Real Trail have offered some funding for the design aspects of that one but really aren't equipped to fundraise much beyond that um, and there's just not you know we we would have to make up the rest of that very likely um, if 
none, you know, or only some of that comes from CPC. Um, and so I think we had concerns there about, you know, we've purchased buildings in the past without having a clear plan for them um, and didn't want to kind of go down that path again. And while I agree, I think there will be need for the, for the rail trail, we also felt like the need is there and identified for the Miracle Field because that's been up and running and, and they clearly need the, um, the facilities up there. But the rail trail, we don't quite know what it's going to be yet. I mean, I agree. I don't know where else people will use the restrooms. And I think it will draw a lot of people to NARA for the snack thing and other stuff. But, um, you know, in some ways, it kind of makes sense to wait and better understand what those needs are before moving ahead with it. So the timing on that one's just, I think we felt was a bit off. Sure. But is it possible that people can, from the rail trail anyway, could use the bathrooms <laughs> that are in the back or Oh yeah, I mean, the the, there's so, a, there's so, existing bathrooms. I mean, they've ridden so far, they can, mm -hmm. as I'm thinking here, they can ride a quarter mile further to use the bathrooms on the other end of the park. Well, and there's bathrooms there already, right, right. so they could use those. I don't think it, maybe it's, they, it's they, a matter they, of keeping them open till dark or something if the park's not open or something, but okay, well. Yeah, I mean, I don't think this proposal was would have kept the bathrooms open any later or that it's specifically designated. I mean, the idea was that it, that the rail trail would probably be bringing more people through and that there is already some need for bathrooms there and this would, you know, is going to cause more need, but uh, that they weren't saying we're going to, you know, keep these open later or it's just for rail trail use or anything like that. But I, I just texted Tom and he hasn't, I don't, he might not be looking at his phone, but uh, I guess my question to him is, is there a drop dead date on accepting these houses? Because we may want to see what happens with CPC first before we accept the houses. And also, is there a chance to use the houses for housing? I mean, they're a nice little modular house. <coughs> We'd have to have a place to put them, but yeah. Janet? How much does it cost to move the houses? I mean, I know the houses are free. We just have to move them. And then do they have to, I assume that they have to go on some sort of foundation. You can't just Right. No, that, I mean, that's the 60000 The cost of the move, I'm not 100% sure on because, because part of the discussion, uh, I think, is that whether the house could be moved up kind of the walkway past um, the uh, uh, um, um, music uh, uh, pavilion up to Miracle Field or not. If it, if it has to go on the road, mm -hmm. then there'd be some, maybe some significant cost because uh, power lines might have to be raised to do that. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have a number uh, on that at the moment. Well, is there a plan, it, was there a plan as before all the, this business came up with the, the donated houses, was there a plan to have porta johns for say, to serve the the rail trail people or I mean was it anticipated that they would just go the extra distance to because there are there are port -a johns on at NARA well there are quite a and, quite a few in the summer and um, I assume right. that well I don't know if this is I mean year-round I, I don't go there in the winter time so I don't know what the setup is but I assume uh, there's two still in the winter <laughs> and don't ask me why no you know I, it seems to me that I, I mean in the short term if we were reluctant to commit to taking more than the one where you know for the for miracle field which seems to make sense because the needs there are rather different i mean it's much more challenging and they do have extra large porta johns but it's uh, you know it, it's not really spacious and if you have somebody with disabilities who needs assistance it, it's kind of awkward uh, but for for people who are bicycling uh you know I'm sure some of them go off in the woods. So, um, you know, I think a porta john would, or you know, a row of porta johns would be a short-term, you know, solution in the uh, as an alternative to, you know, a nice bathroom. But to my knowledge, that has not been discussed. I mean, you know, keeping in mind that the rail trail really has just commenced uh, construction, so we're a good year, year and a half away yeah. before it's it's done. But um, I mean, that certainly could be a, a solution. And then I, th I gather that rec is also they're in the process of working up a plan because they're concerned about security and parking and all that. And I think that as it becomes more built up as a location, you know, it attracts more people. Uh, they've got to start dealing with all of these sort of logistics that come from having 
being very attractive for a lot of people coming on foot and cars and on bikes so and having the facility so maybe it'll be a little clearer later what it is that we need to provide the way of bathrooms for all the people who want to use NARA so um, but, okay. so I think I mean ideally if we could wait till we had information from CBC this would be better so why don't we put it off tonight try to get an answer from Tom on that and why don't we put a placeholder maybe on the agenda for Saturday so that if we did need to have a vote before our next meeting we could do it on Saturday um, were there any questions or comments from the audience <laughs> sorry you just come up and press the button and say your name and address, please. Richard Keller, 46 Brewster Lane. I'm just wondering if you've had any uh, revenue stream identified for maintaining the toilets, cleaning them, you know, emptying the trash, et cetera. Um, I think that would be through. I, I, th I think we'd probably want to look at a private service for that, okay. um, you know. Uh, because I mean that, and I've I've raised that same issue with 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 recreation because I've uh, been to many public parks when my sons were playing baseball in high school, and you know some of the some of the bathrooms get pretty rough. So I, I think we really need to look at maintaining how we would maintain. I mean, they have staff that maintain stuff at Nara now, so I don't know could be included in that or if they need something separate. But that is a good a good point, Franny. I think we should also be talking to Goulds um, and other places along the way because I know they have parking planned for behind them maybe we could work something out where there's some bathroom available I don't know it's just something to think about as we go along it's not that far but much farther so it's my understanding that right now NARA pays for itself out of just the user fees and I'm assuming that that any additional maintenance that would be required would maybe require uh, an increase in user fees but that it would still be paid for out of the NARA um, right and and one of the uh, one of one of the, actually the CPC projects the um, park and control study I, I, I at, at one point at least Rex been envisioning some kind of parking permits or passes that would generate some some fees and I think they're also expecting and you know again this is sort of the waiting till we see what happens at the rail trail is that you know if people are coming through the rail trail coming through NARA there's a snack bar there and I think they're expecting to see some increase in you know people stopping there and, and purchasing stuff which I would you know suspect as well because there's not really a, a lot else along the way there's occasionally some people that sell hot dogs which is, and, and have like kitten adoptions it's pretty great but um, there's not a ton else along the rail trail so yeah there's some kitten adoptions um, yeah, no, they do. It's great. There's like this one part you're driving down and the yeah, I mean, it might be two organizations. No, I'm pretty sure the people that were adopting the kittens were also selling the hot dogs. It was great. Um, yeah, they didn't have the kittens there. They just had pictures of the kittens. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, it was a pretty good time. Uh, I think you buy the hot dog that supports the kittens. I don't know, whatever. Um, <laughs> but outside of the kitten hot dogs, <laughs> I haven't, there's not a ton of, you know, there's some restaurants along the end, but there's not a ton, so... Um, okay, so we will add it to the Saturday agenda, you know, as a placeholder and check it back with Tom about how far we can push this off. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Consent agenda. I will read through these. If you would like to hold something, please say hold. Number eight, accept gift recreation department, a gift totaling $251.28 from David Schottler from proceeds of a bake sale towards his Eagle Scout project. I just want to say there was a really nice note from him in there about his project and thanking the recreation departments. I hope everybody got a chance to see that and thank you very much to David. Um, refund request from the building department is building department is requesting to grant a refund for building permit to Vivant Solar at 50% of the cost for a total of $287. Number 10, completion of the purchase and acquisition of 501 Massachusetts Ave rear parcel and acceptance of deed. Number 11, refund, request for refund, Chalk D. Inc. Um, to issue a refund for $100 for common victual license overpayment. Number 12, accept meeting minutes November 10th, 2015. And number 13, request to dispose of obsolete items, Act of Memorial Library. Okay, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Um, move that we um, approve consent agenda items 8 through 13. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? 
Okay, and Franny, I think you had a couple events you wanted to talk about under your report. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say there's a few transportation things upcoming, and so I thought I'd mention them. Um, the, oh, and I, I had sent it. I was hoping to put it on the screen, um, but I can't easily, right, even if it's on my... I think just yeah, reading just, them is fine. I'll just say them. They would have been nice if people watching. Um, the, the, in order, um, Crosstown Connect um, Transportation Management Association has its next meeting this Thursday, January 7th, 12 o'clock noon at Littleton Police Headquarters, 500 Great Road in Littleton. That same day, 2.30, um, in Concord at the Department of Planning and Land Management at 141 Keys Road is the next magic uh, subregion of our planning region um, meeting. That's where 13 towns get together. And it's usually town managers or planning directors or selectmen from all the towns that get together. Um, on Monday, January 11th, the Minuteman Regional Coordinating Committee, the even bigger area, um, transportation group, we're focusing on career centers and employment transportation. And there are invited guests coming from the director of the career center in Lowell and Barbara O'Neill, and also um, the director of finance at, for the greater Boston area, Dean Lam Lamott, I don't know how to pronounce it, L-A-M-O-T-H-E, from E Inc. Company, um, is coming. I saw him at an event about transportation for employment and he was a very lively speaker and so he was good so I was hoping that people who were interested in employment in this area or um, transportation would be come to that 10 o'clock in the morning and that's at West Acton Village Works 525 Mass Ave in West Acton um, and then the Senior Center Study Committee public forum I wanted to remind people of on January 13th um, next Wednesday and it's a time as is the next few months for people to give input as to what kind of space needs they see for the new senior center. Um, and so I'm hoping people come to that. And big transportation, finally, um, announcement days. Um, on January 29th at 10.30 in the morning here at Town Hall is the ribbon cutting ceremony for Cross Acton Transit. And there'll be legislators and um, refreshments and it should be an exciting event um, and we're really starting to publicize the bus that's been going around and around town and so we're hoping people take it and the next day I don't know the details but the train station is being formally opened on the January 30th, 30th. Oh, so um, I believe it's in the morning Peter you don't know the details of that do you I don't I gotta talk to Jamie anyway so I just wanted people to know about those so sorry not to give a visual but we can also put it out through the TV station, I suppose. Sure. Thanks. Okay, and then last thing I said I'd make my official announcement by the state. So, um, you know, I just want to say I very much enjoyed the past three years on this committee and um, hopefully have added uh, some value to the discussions here. And I do feel as though I have um, some projects I'm still, you know, working on and, and hoping to see through. So I have decided to um, run for re-election. So Jen and I will both be doing that. Um, all right. Is there anything else people wanted to announce? Okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Motion to adjourn. Anybody want a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, and just uh, stick around because there's a couple things to sign. And then reminder that Budget Saturday starts at 8 on Saturday.